Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Less Dependent Wisconsin. Last year I mentioned that I wanted to turn my front yard into a perennial pollinator garden and that's the project for this video. I'm going to show you how I design it, uh, how I build the raised beds, how I fill the raised beds, uh, the different plants I put in it, I'll break down the overall costs, and uh, just a few of the other things I do along the way. So, quite a bit to do. Let's go get started. So the first step in my perennial garden is just kind of planning it out. And I just bought that bird bath. So that's gonna kind of be the centerpiece. What I think I'm gonna do is something like this. I'm gonna build two four foot by eight foot raised beds there. And then I'm gonna do three three by six beds across the top back now that's bee balm and a few other plants kind of got away away from me this year with weeds and stuff like that um, so I'm gonna focus on that more towards the end of this but I do want to get the yard more in a proper shape and I think what I'm gonna do in between all the raised beds will be clover just like on the other half of my yard. So let's start getting the beds built. Okay, so the beds are all made. This is the rough layout of where they're gonna be. I'm gonna do a little bit of measuring and get everything nice and centered. This bed turned out to be a three by eight. This one's four by eight. And then the ones in the back are three by six. And the way I assembled them, it was pretty easy. I just used a two by four, about seven and a half inches long. So I've got a, about a two inch anchor. I put one on the sides to support it. Uh, the center pieces really don't need a support. It's not that high and it's, the wood should keep everything in place without bowing. So, Next up now is I've got to get everything leveled, measured, and set in place. Once that's done, I'll come back and talk to you about how we're going to fill these beds. Okay, so I got the beds in place. So now it's time to fill them. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a few logs around the outside, a bag of manure in the middle, and then topping it with dirt I have from a raised bed in the back that I'm taking apart. So we're going to pack it down and we're going to leave about an inch, inch and a half on the top for mulch. But let's get these beds filled and then we can start planting. Okay, so I just went on a shopping spree and bought all the flowers and the cypress mulch. And I think I've got everything laid out the way I want it. So what I'm going to do is get everything planted and then I'll kind of walk around and show you what the different plants are. I've kind of ranged things from tallest growing to the shortest growing. So, and say hi to Max. Got everything planted and mulched and it was a good day to do it. It was only about 60 degrees today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of go down the line, show you the different plants that I got, and tell you when they bloom. Uh, the, the first ones we got here, these are called Bumble Blue, and they flower in early summer. I've got Day Lilies, those also are in early summer. And this is a Dropmore Scarlet Honeysuckle, and this will bloom in the summer. This is called a Grape Crush, and that blooms in early fall, and this is a Mandarin Tango that will also bloom in the fall. This is called Electric Lights Double Pink, and it's an Azalea. It blooms in the early spring, as you can see. We've got what's called an Uptown Girl right there. That'll bloom in midsummer. And this is called a Betty Len. It's a red daylily. And this will bloom in late spring or early summer. We've got what's called a golden queen. That'll bloom in late spring, as you can see. 
This is a cover girl. This is a relative of the uptown girl. This will also bloom in midsummer. And this is a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. This will bloom in midsummer as well. And in the last bed, we've got what's called a bobo. It's a panicle hydrangea. We've got cobalt original. This will bloom in early summer. I believe this one's early summer as well. I've got what's called string theory. This will bloom in the spring, as you can see, and pink diamonds. These will start in the spring and bloom all season. Okay, so that was the hard part. Next thing I'm going to do is rototill all the ground and then I'm going to plant white clover seeds. And so the clover that I've got there will fill in all the gaps here. So I'll get this done and get the straw spread and get this looking nice. We're almost done. And this is kind of the finished product. We got the clover spread today. I used the leftover straw I had to cover it up, retain a little water, a little bit of a weed barrier. But in a few weeks, the clover should start poking through and the green will look nice against these, the reddish color of the cypress mulch. So, now how much did I spend? Well, a little more than I anticipated. Um, first off, I got about 20 plants and clover seed. That cost me about $400. The lumber to build the beds was another couple hundred and then mulch was another hundred dollars i bought the bird bath new that was about a hundred and seventy dollars and that was it but if you're really looking at doing just one bed you can probably do it for under a hundred dollars so anyways i'm going to also be getting a solar powered fountain for the bird bath and I'll be doing a product review on that. So you'll get to see an updated version of the garden when that comes in and see how that solar fountain works. So anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Focus on being less dependent. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.